e benvenuti all'Istituto Italiano di Cultura a Los Angeles. Good evening and uh, welcome to the Italian Cultural Institute in Los Angeles. Tonight's uh, program marks uh, the beginning of uh, our fall season and I'm very happy and proud to start with the opening of uh, UNESCO Italia Fotografie. This uh, exhibit is promoted by the Italian Ministry of Culture and its Secretary General UNESCO office, the ICCD, which is the Central Institute for Cataloging and Documentation, and uh, our own Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. After premiering in uh, Washington DC last uh, June, uh, the exhibit is now on view here at the Italian Cultural Institute in Los Angeles with uh, a special selection of photographs uh, that were not uh, previously shown. So we are lucky enough to have our own exclusives. And uh, then uh, it will move uh, to New York City at uh, the beginning of next year. This uh, project has uh, a very long uh, history. It has been in the making actually for uh, a few years. The main idea behind it is uh, to um, show and present the 58 UNESCO World Heritage Sites that uh, we have uh, in Italy. But this project is actually much more than uh, a simple survey. It's, uh, it's a way for us to document our heritage and uh, therefore to preserve it. Also, whenever we talk about uh, uh, our cultural heritage, we talk about our identity too. So this is a way to present who we are and what Italy is. And the many layers of uh, this uh, project uh, do not end here because uh, the photographs uh, on uh, uh, display are uh, taken by some of the most uh, important uh, Italian contemporary photographers, uh, just to name a few, uh, Gabriele Basilico, uh, Olivo Barbieri, Mimmo Iodice, Raffaella uh, Mariniello. And uh, uh, these pictures are a testimony not simply of the sites that they depict, but actually of the visions, uh, of the vision that these photographers uh, have uh, of these places. Like, for example, the picture of uh, this uh, Pompeian fresco by Mimo Iodice does not simply represent Pompeii, but the way he sees and interprets, uh, interprets uh, Pompeii. So it's, it's a dialogue between these photographers and our heritage, and in the process, uh, these photographers become also part of uh, our cultural heritage. So tonight uh, we will be discussing these uh, uh, topics with uh, four experts during a panel discussion that will precede uh, the opening of the exhibit. We are honored to have with us uh, the curator of the show, Francesca Fabiani, who is also responsible for contemporary photography projects at the ICCD in Italy. Uh, we have been working uh, on this exhibition uh, with Francesca very closely for the last uh, few months. So I would like to take this opportunity to say uh, grazie and uh, congratulations for this show, cara Francesca. <laughs> Joining uh, Francesca in the conversation, there will be also two uh, local but uh, worldwide uh, recognized uh, authorities in the field. Uh, Sandra Phillips, who is uh, curator emeritus of photography at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art, and uh, Maristella Casciato, who is uh, senior curator and head of architectural collections at the Getty Research Institute in Los Angeles, and uh, who has worked uh, very closely with the uh, World Heritage uh, List uh, in Paris. Uh, the conversation will be uh, facilitated by another expert in this area, Emily Pugh, who is Digital Humanities Specialist at the Getty Research Institute. Uh, Emily recently uh, came back from a work uh, trip in Italy that also uh, included the, a stop at the ICCD. So I guess this is a perfect way uh, to conclude your uh, experience. So let me just uh, finish by saying that this exhibit and uh, this uh, program is part of uh, a shared uh, 
vision of how the system uh, of Italian institutions in Los Angeles want to present uh, our country uh, to you. Whatever we do here at the Cultural Institute is done hand uh, uh, in hand with uh, the Consulate General of Italy, uh, the Italian Trade Commission, and the Italian Tourist uh, Board, especially a project uh, like this, which has uh, so many uh, layers and implications. Uh, therefore, I'm very happy to call on stage for her welcome remarks, the Consul General of Italy in Los Angeles. Please join me in welcoming on stage Consul General Raffaella Valentini. Grazie. Thank you, Emanuele. Welcome, everybody. Um, it's a real pleasure being with you tonight at the Italian Cultural Institute. Uh, although in, uh, very soon we will be uh, um, uh, transported in a, in a journey, in a journey all around Italy to show you all the beauties of our cultural and natural heritage. So uh, um, you may already know that Italy, Italy hosts uh, the largest number of uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites. We are very proud of that. And we are really happy to share this patrimony with, uh, with the world. And um, this makes uh, Italy a real cultural superpower. Uh, I invite you all uh, to travel uh, to Italy, of course, to discover all the marvels that our country has to offer. But while still being here in this beautiful city uh, and planning your next uh, trip to Italy, uh, this UNESCO photo exhibit, as uh, Emanuele, Emanuele just reminded, uh, that is about to be inaugurated will really give you the occasion to explore the amazing landscapes, historical and cultural sites that we host. Let me brief, uh, uh, in make this introduction uh, because uh, uh, it's, uh, it's important to say uh, sometimes an image uh, is, uh, is worth uh, a thousand uh, words. So we'll soon embark on a journey that will bring you to the historic centers of Florence, Rome, Genoa, Venice, Verona, and many more beautiful cities. You may want to do a quick stop to admire the very unique uh, Trulli of Albero Bello be before diving into the Aeolian Islands and then coming back to mainland, uh, mainland to admire the mosaics of Piazza Armerina, Noto, and Syracuse in Sicily. And why not having a stroll on the beautiful hills of Valdorcia and the mountains of the Dolomites? Also, do not forget to stop by the Amalfi Coast to experience Mediterranean beauty and elegance and the famous Limoncello. You will soon uh, will see with your own eyes that these are not simple postcards, but expressions of great art made by Italian talent photographers of excellence. Let me thank all the panelists for joining us tonight to present and celebrate these amazing talents. And I'm very proud to underline that all our panelists are women, and this is uh, something that I want to, uh, to underline and to celebrate. We will be able to experience, among other things, history and traditional art through uh, these lenses of a contemporary art from like photography. This fine encounter between tradition and innovation is what uh, makes Italy uh, the beautiful country that we all love. So looking forward to starting this exciting journey with you. And thank you, Emanuele, for your tireless efforts in organizing such a great event and exhibition. I now leave the floor to our panelists and I invite them to the, to the stage. Hello, everyone. I want to thank our hosts and thank Emanuele for inviting us to inaugurate this wonderful exhibition with this conversation. Um, Francesca, as the person who organized the exhibition, <laughs> perhaps you can start us off by telling us a little bit about the HHA Day, the ICCD, its, its role, its history, and um, the idea behind this project. Okay, yes. Yes. Thank you, Emily, and thank you to the Council and to Emanuele for this common effort and for the result, and of course for my dear friends, first of all, Maristella and Sandra, who joined us in this occasion. <clears throat> so I will try to lead you 
and to lead me uh, because I, it's quite an experimental journey I will do. <laughs> I choose just well, yeah, uh, okay. Maybe I can check oh, from sure. here, mm -hmm. yes, otherwise it will be. I choose one single subject to tell a story, the story of the ICCD, this is a very bad acronym, <laughs> and is still worst, maybe, <laughs> when you disclose it. So, Istituto Centrale per il Catalogo e la Documentazione. And where is photography? I mean, it's our uh, main mission is to preserve the huge amount of photographs we have, more than six million. So, it would have been Istituto Centrale per il Catalogo e la Documentazione Fotografica, Photographic Documentation. And the story starts from, let's take this subject, the Tower of Pisa, Pisa Tower, that will lead us through the story and through the, uh, till uh, we will arrive to the exhibition we will visit it in a short while. So, this is uh, an image taken by Giovanni Gargiolli, who was the founder and the first director of the um, Gabinetto Fotografico Nazionale, National Photographic Cabinet. This, uh, the founder of this, uh, the idea to found uh, a laboratory, a photographic laboratory, was uh, uh, not so far after the uh, unification of Italy as a kingdom, so 1870. The GFN, to make it short, was founded in 1895, so not so far, not so. And we can say it was um, in that mood in that period of the, the nation building. Uh, Italians know very, very well that Italy was made, but the, 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 the major effort was to do the Italians. So, uh, and so in this uh, tentative to find which were the, the issue to, to underline, cultural heritage was seen immediately as a, a tool uh, for um, for strength, uh, identity. Sorry, I'm the only one not local, so maybe my English may not be so fluent. And so, the first um, survey of Gargiolli was to, to, to portray, to map, uh, all the Italian cultural heritage from north to south, from towns to ruins, to landscape, already landscape was, they were already conscious that the landscape was part of this cultural heritage. So, uh, with the, uh, not only to build, uh, to reinforce identity, but even to preserve the idea that was a mission to preserve because Italy was already well known, uh, no? Voyage in Italy, uh, uh, and so to preserve all these places, but the first need was to map them because we were not aware of how many, where, in which condition. And so the preservation uh, of cultural heritage was the main reason why the GFN, the National Cabinet, was founded. And this is the first picture of the Pisa Tower by uh, his director, uh, Giovanni Gargiolli. We go on, is another by Giovanni Gargiolli. And it's very interesting that uh, the main worries, uh, compared with other pictures of the period that we will see later, this picture are not at all worried about showing something beautiful. But they were, uh, let's say, straight photography, okay? <laughs> uh, the, the, um, they were not stereotyped, they were just to map, to document, and maybe even to see in which condition. And so we have more and more. And then the, uh, the most uh, uh, extraordinary uh, part of our collection is that shows the backstage of um, protection, uh, cultural heritage. So for example, we have all the collection um, related to the work for restoring the tower, uh, Pisa Tower, 
uh, during the, the, the 30. I mean, all of these uh, are part of our photography collection. All the picture of Giovanni Gargiolli became the first part of a big archive that never stopped its activity. The activity of GFN in documenting, photographically documenting Italian heritage still goes on. And after that, um, they were so producing pictures, but at the same time, uh, purchasing pictures uh, through uh, collectors, uh, photographers, or um, artists, or um, yes, ma many ways. Um, and so this is the most interesting part. I will go fast. <laughs> and you see the restoring site. And these are many other uh, pictures of Tower Pisa that I suppose has been a very um, a problem for Italia <laughs> in terms of conservation. And so we go on, we go on, and then we uh, go on till uh, the moment uh, that we find another story. That is, um, this is one of the last pictures we made uh, for an exhibition about UNESCO site that is not this. And the other story is uh, the image of Pisa Tower has a beautiful place. So it starts from the stereotypized image of that, the Alinari photography that were made for to be sold. So the idea was to, to make it beautiful, no? not to show the, the problem of the monument. Great authors uh, spend their talent to portray like Giorgio Sommer, and so these were the stereo, um, stereoscopie that prints made to be seen through a machine. To give, yeah, yeah. Um, and these were, were used to uh, make, to, to cut away all the uh, disturbing elements, no? To, to realize postcards, uh, to yeah. clean it up. So. Yeah. And, and this is the other story, the story that we are most used to see, these mm -hmm. images. But it's interesting that while we have that uh, protection, uh, cultural heritage protection collection, at the same time we get also all this mm -hmm. uh, rich uh, example of how photography can tell a story, but can also tell another story. And going through, down in this way, uh, uh, there is a, a, another story we also care of, and this the vernacular photography. Mm. So these kind of images we, we want in our family album. Um, now it's, uh, it's, it's come at the attention of collectors and curators. So vernacular photography became another issue because it's revealing something about ourselves, about the way photography uh, tells something about us. So not anymore and only. Monuments. It, yes. What, how people identify with the monuments and yes. incorporate those into their self identity. Yes. And so um, we also have a platform to come into the modernity in mm -hmm. our institute uh, because the idea simply is, uh, is always to document cultural heritage in new ways. I mean, nowadays it makes some sense because you can find images of Pisa Tower or, yeah. or everything everywhere, uh, whenever you want, in every kind of images you need. So uh, our main uh, goal uh, is to be modern, as modern was Giovanni Gargiolli at the very beginning, to use photography to understand the present, to, mm -hmm. to know reality, to know our country. And so this is another way. So we have a, a digital collection of uh, vernacular photography taken by common people who put online their photograph. And so to end, I will be, we have very few time, so uh, <laughs> to make a long story short, we arrived to say, so why we still need new pictures of Pisa Tower, I mean, we have six million <laughs> pictures. I show you just a small part, but I could, show more images of P Pisa Tower we have in our collection. Yes, because um, the, the subject is still the cultural heritage that is the main 
um, topic of this exhibition, but it's also the um, photogra Italian photographic scene. And so what we want to add is uh, that look that photographers can add to things. In that case, this is Olivo Barbieri, a very well-known Italian photographer that took part to that very important um, movement of photography, La Scuola Italiana di Paesaggio, during the 80s, that were reasoning uh, on um, how the way we see at reality can influence our way of perceiving reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, thanks to a great number of photographers, among them Gabriele Basilico, Olivo Barbieri, Vittori Fossati, most of them are on show, to reason about stereotype and the way we look at the th things with uh, reality with the same images in mind. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, this is a way in, um, uh, uh, to look at Pisa Tower in the night light, urban light light, that give us a complete different images mm -hmm. of it. I cannot go more into the mm -hmm. <laughs> poetic of Olivo Barbieri, but it's just to, to say that this was an attempt tentative to, to give new um, consciousness, uh, a new perception, new not only of the cultural heritage, or but on how they influence our way of seeing reality. Mm -hmm. I hope it was a little clear, <laughs> more or less. Thank you. <clears throat> it's interesting that the more sites are photographed, the more people want to photograph them. <laughs> so, I said it's interesting that, to some extent, the more sites are photo photographed, the more people want to photograph yes. them again and again. A never ending story. Yeah. And then and each photo is, is a unique document, even if the topic or the subject of the yeah. photograph is the same. So yeah, thank you. Um, Maristella, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about uh, the UNESCO part of the story, sort of uh, the history of UNESCO and, and yeah. Well, let's These start. Sites. Good evening and thank you for being here and thank you, Emanuele, for this great uh, open opportunity for us to be together. <laughs> um, well, UNESCO Italy, I guess, and it's important to say that it's a very timely exhibition, considering that only a couple of days ago, UNESCO announced the nomination 2023 and include a new site. So we are 59 now in case you want to know. And it's a serial nomination properties of Gypsum Cave. It's a very interesting area in Emilia Romagna, the Apennine. It's a, a karst terrain with a very specific geo, geomorphological uh, caves. So this means that uh, the UNESCO, it's like an active agency in terms of the Italian cultural heritage. Now, it is, I mean, without going too far in my story and too all, I mean, too long ago, it is worth recalling that the first nomination we were talking with Francesca dated 1979, the convention is 72, so we are at the very beginning of this story and what is called the outstanding universal value of a monument or a site or a landscape, at the time was assigned, you see here the image, to a prehistoric petroglyphs. So something you would not imagine, it's not a città d'arte, it's not Roma, it's something that it's in a certain way a hidden jewel of our uh, um, cultural heritage. And there are various reasons we are, we are discussing while we were meeting here, why this is the beginning. What are we looking for? This is a very well-known photos uh, uh, of the site of the rock drawings in Valcamonica in Lombardy. And Vittorio Fossati is one of the photographer, and you will see several of his photographs in the uh, exhibition. Now, this is the beginning. 
which one was the last property to give you a, a, an idea of so of uh, the different how the heritage concept has a, a variations and diversification uh, before the cave that I just mentioned, the last property that was um, listed that was in 2021, and it's uh, something completely different. It's what is called a transnational property. This means that it's a prop there are various properties in different countries in Europe, and the the uh, the the ensemble of properties, they make a sense for the identity in different regions. And this, this was the nomination of what I translate as the great thermal towns, the spa yes, in Europe. <laughs> and Italy in, included Montecatini Terme in this case. But the idea of something that it's not national, but it becomes part of a much wider idea of uh, collaborations. And well, I'm not going through the very laborious process of the uh, nomination, but some parameters, I guess, will be interesting for also to understand the exhibition. Well, our council mentioned all the cultural sites what we call the città d'arte. They are all there, of course, you will say, but don't forget that they are under a continuous monitoring process. Say Venice is one of the case, due to the risk, because those cultural properties, they become also extremely popular, so there are risks, constant risk in their uh, in their, I mean, in the uh, keeping the value still at the very uh, um, top level. Um, but what is interesting is that the città d'arte in Italy are everywhere. I mean, you will see among them a jewel like Pienza. I mean, of the early Renaissance, it was listed in '96. And few years before, Gianni Berengo Gardin was the photographer for the historic center of San Gimignano. So those are really, I mean, vis-a-vis -vis what we call the big cities, Venice, Bologna, Roma, uh, and so on, uh, Modena, and I, I, I can go on, Pisa. I mean, we need to understand that the World Heritage List also includes those more secluded, more re re in a certain way, less known, but then, I mean, becoming part of this identitarian uh, um, uh, program. Um, one can think about Italy about and uh, the uh, archaeological <coughs> site. The first archaeological site in Italy are the Doric temple, uh, temples in Agrigento, in Sicily. And we need to wait 1997, so almost 20 years after the first site. And one could be astonished about that. And I think that that was the result, for instance, of an incredible campaign to save Agrigento at the time, while Agrigento was under very serious threat of uh, all kind of uh, developers, uh, mafia groups, and so on. So it was an important political statement to list the uh, Doric temples. Um, I am an architectural historian of the 20th century, so one can say how much of the 20th century is in the World Heritage List? Very little. <laughs> Ivrea, which I don't know if it's, you are familiar, is the most important, one of the most uh, important industrial site of the 20th century in Italy, implemented under the, the direction of Adriano Olivetti, was only inscribed in 2018, and still remains the only 20th century site um, in, in Italy, which in a certain way, it's rather astonishing. And, but in this case, the ECCD actually <laughs> selected a very, very interesting photographer, photographer Allegra Martin, Martin, 
Uh, she belongs to the, most, the younger generation, born in the 80s. So many women also entered into this process of photographing the Italian heritage. Um, often, and this is the, at the very end of my short presentation, uh, sites can be implemented in various ways. You can add more components to a site and that they become serial nomination. But it's most important to say that the international co cooperation of the transnational site are now extremely relevant. So right now there are six transnational sites in the Italian list, which means that the heritage is also a shared heritage, more and more. I selected four images, and you will recognize some of the photographers that have been already mentioned. This is Gabriele Basilico. Gabriele Basilico is an architect. Sorry. Gabriele is an architect from the Politecnico in Milan who died very uh, young. And this is an example of one of his photos of another industrial site in Italy, the company town of the late 19th century uh, of the industrial village called in, um, the Crespi Dadda. And so this is the case. And uh, Berengo Gardin comes next. And those are, this is still Crespi Dadda, sorry. And this is Berengo Gardin for, with the natural landscape site in Val d'Orcia in Tuscany which is one of uh, the idea of uh, extending I mean, from one site to region and how the region are also uh, transformed through the main activities. And I want to close because it was a, a site that I, I knew that existed, but for me it's extremely extremely unusual. And this is the Vulcano, the Etna, uh, photographed by Dario uh, Colletti. It's, it's a natural site. It's something that it's, it's, we are very close to Catania. It becomes part of the daily landscape when the, the <laughs> eruption is there of the people that live in this beautiful baroque city of uh, Catania. So there is a lot to learn about how the UNESCO and the Italian committee work, I mean, in the selection of the site. Yeah, and they really uh, document this idea of heritage as an evolving and changing one. So from built sites, prehistoric, some modern, if maybe some not modern. enough to our, <laughs> in our opinion, <laughs> um, landscape, and yeah, thank yeah. you. I mean, that's very, very rare, and you will see a lot of witness of all this in the exhibition that Francesca selected in this case for our venue here in Los Angeles. Thank you. It's all fine. I'm sorry, Ron. Now, yeah. you need this, yes. and you know it's very simple. Okay. <laughs> so, Sandra, maybe we can uh, expand out a little bit and look outside of Italy and think about other kinds of similar projects that were happening in other places. And you thank can you, and I also thank everyone for their wonderful uh, uh, organization here and my esteemed colleagues and my dear friend. Thank you so much for in including me. I'm just going to mention some historic uh, precedents um, so we can continue this discussion because the the um, organization that we're focusing on today has, has in interesting precedents and, and we can discuss that further. The most important, I think, is the Mission Héliographique in France, which was um, organized in the 1850s, actually quite soon after the invention of photography. Um, it was organized to preserve uh, at least the memory of a pre, uh, photographic pre-industrial um, architecture that was uh, because of, of industry was in, felt to be endangered. And um, it, 
though it came from Paris, the, the Mission was actually a, a nationwide um, effort, and it focused, though it focused on uh, medieval um, uh, heritage, it, it included um, other larger, older um, monuments, as you see here. Um, let me just figure out how to show the next one. Yeah. Now. Here. Oh, great, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it included uh, this picture from Chartres, um, as, well as, uh, as well as other uh, medieval um, monuments including this very elegant uh, photograph of Saint Trophime by Baldus. These, this um, project really um, gave a, a kind of um, uh, a serious national recognition to the transformation of the culture really from uh, industry and it, it um, I think made France very much aware of its uh, patrimony in a way that was a national recognition. Okay, now. Okay, so the, the next uh, group I want to show is, is an American um, uh, organization, the Farm Security Organization administration, um, otherwise known as the FSA, which was uh, promoted by Franklin Roosevelt when he was the president, and it was a way to deal with uh, the depression. And as I'm sure many Americans know, the depression was felt deeply in the uh, countryside, much less in the cities, uh, though there of course were uh, incidents, but um, the, the goal of the FSA was to, by publicizing, by photographing and putting these pictures in newspapers, to make uh, Americans aware of what was happening where they, m many of them were not living. And of course, a lot of the um, destruction took place because of bad practices by these farmers who were uh, tearing up um, environments that shouldn't be disturbed. Um, and, and as a result, people were suffering terribly. And the most important figures that, were, that came out of this were Walker Evans and Dorothea Lang, both of them hired by the FSA, both of them made their um, essential marks uh, through the FSA, um, but uh, whose, whose work really was, oh, I should say they were very um, contentious people, both of them very um, uh, difficult personalities. Um, Walker Evans was really an artist and his FSA work was shown in the 30s at the Museum of Modern Art, not exactly the, the, pub, the larger public. And though Lang was very um, dedicated to publicizing in a very broad way the problems of the, uh, the 30s and, and the countryside, um, she was a tough cookie and very hard to work with and was both of them were actually fired. So okay. let me show you these very beautiful and very um, uh, revealing and um, a more uh, enormously moving um, photographs by Evans and, um, and Dorothy Lang, where you, of course, have to read the text, which is important, it shows you how where her sympathies lay. And this man who was a, a cotton picker in the South, who, whose position is to, um, to protect his mouth, he has no teeth. His teeth have all fallen out. 
And then finally, and this is going to be a very brief overview here, um, I wanted to uh, show a, an important French uh, organization, a more modern one, which is called DATAR, um, which was um, organized in the 80s to document what was happening to the French countryside. <clears throat> It was, in, in some respect, a kind of um, response to a show that was very popular in the United States that was uh, to a small audience called New Topographics. And New Topographics was about um, really uh, the mechanization, the, the importance of uh, industry and its influence on, on landscape. <clears throat> and, um, and so the French uh, datar was really a, a counterweight to that. It was a, a re-looking at the, the, the beauty of the French landscape, but also its complexity, also its position in the 20th century, what it looked like as a modern French landscape. And so I will show you um, uh, uh, and the other thing that was so interesting about Datar was they hired um, not just French photographers, they hired Louis Baltz, for instance, who had been part of the new topographics show and project. Um, they also hired um, uh, Gabriele Basilico, who was certainly not French, um, but here's this lovely and um, obviously very modern look at um, northern France by Sophie Wistelhuber. Um, there was a significant amount of color photography um, by Dupardon, which is a kind of precedent to what what happened with the show that we're looking at now. And then the w wonderful um, pictures of Basilico. This is very, very northern France um, near the Belgian border. Very, a very mysterious um, and very accurate, of course, picture of that kind of northern atmosphere. Um. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> So thank you all. I think that's provided us with some wonderful context for going into the exhibition with. Um, thinking about the Farm Services Administration project, I mean, as I understand it, a big part of that was to sort of raise awareness amongst Americans about what tax dollars were going to support and um, you know, raising awareness about the conditions in, say, the Dust Bowl or across the country. Um, and in the case of Ichi Day, would you say that um, part of its role as well is to sort of raise awareness of heritage and what it is amongst the larger population, or? Its institutional mission are two different, let's say, maybe I was not, I was worried to be too long. <laughs> but, <laughs> so I, there are more many things to explain, mm -hmm. but we have two missions. The name is, it means that after, after the first brick of this big wall that was the Gabinetto Fotografico Nazionale, uh, our institute is devoted to document, that's why documentation, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. cultural mm -hmm. heritage, and to give all the other structure on the territory of Italy the instrument and the tool to cataloging in the right way mm. the cultural yeah. heritage. Yeah. So that is a mission, but on the other side, uh, a not a strange, a natural thing happened. That was that from the idea of photography of cultural heritage, it shift to photography as cultural yeah. heritage. Mm -hmm. Photography in itself mm -hmm. become cultural heritage to promote, to protect, to enhance, and to um, um, improve. I mean, we are improving contemporary talents, we are giving them 
opportunity to express themselves. So our mission is also to work on photography on our historical collection as well as to contemporary. And so I had only one thing that each exhibition, each venue uh, can um, Ex ex shows only a part of the collection mm -hmm. that now is 220 prints. So we make a selection as we, as uh, Emmanuel explained it before. So we'll not, you will not find all the Italian sites and not all the authors that participate to the project, but uh, a selection. Mm -hmm. uh, then can give you, so photography is uh, literally uh, writing with the light, okay? Yeah. So if we made uh, a comparison with writing, you can write whatever you want. So the idea is to have something that can tell you about reality as a journalist. So a true story, like mm -hmm. can be, I don't know, let's say maybe Gianni Berengo, in a way, in a very poetic way, or you can have uh, a thinker that can give you an essay that can be Gabriele Basilico. He's <laughs> very uh, sharp. In an, the, for him, photography is a tool to investigate architecture. On you, you can have a writer, a fiction writer, mm -hmm. like Olivo, that take from reality elements, a place that really exists, like Dostoevsky took characters and places from reality, but to invent another reality. Mm -hmm. So we want to add these many different looks in our collection and on the view of our cultural heritage to be in the contemporary world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I think successfully. Well, in a way, sorry, Emily and uh, what, um, uh, our friend show, I mean, was really an investigation through the photography, I mean, the depression, the investigation of the American countryside, the condition, and so on. Um, the World Heritage Site, I mean, of Italy, I already listed, and when you ask a photographer, you probably ask more to the way his gaze or her gaze can be very different. Mm -hmm. She said, literary, of course, I mean, it could be poetic. So it's also a way to transform the photography also in, a, in another heritage, I mean, another level, if I understand the mission, in a, yeah. at another stage of what a heritage could be, I mean. So there are all this implication that comes together. This is probably the mission of the Institute that changes that. While the American administration was interested in documenting, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, touching the, the conditions, I mean. But they both really demonstrate, I think, well, the sort of dual uh, sides of photography as both document of, of truth, something has to be there, the indexicality yeah. of photography, something has to be there to be physically there to be photographed but also it's sort of artistic dimensions. The yes. fact that it's always very much an interpretation at the same time, yeah. and that those two coexist. Aspects, yeah. Francesca, was that a, a conscious decision you made to, to select photographers who were particularly expressive of mm -hmm. something? Um, was, this, was this kind of your contribution to your, your, uh, uh, the I mean, first of all, the project started in 2006. There I was not working uh -huh, at EGCD. Right. I was at Maxi as mm -hmm. photography curator where we both met. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to take on me all the <laughs> glory and responsibility <laughs> of the first commission project. But of course I worked with, with the same photographer at Maxi. That's why, as I was briefly explaining, in Italy, during the 80s, um, something happened in photography. It was the field in which photography expressed his uh, freedom, even in the language. In, uh, it was the period in, in Italy, very late, mm -hmm. compared with USA or France. Mm -hmm. There was a sort of uh, liberation mm -hmm. uh, of mm -hmm. photography mm -hmm. uh, by the traditional categories in which it was mm -hmm. scheduled. Um, mm -hmm. 
and most of the work was done by these uh, names, like uh, some one of them we mentioned it, and, and all, even the generation that came, but there were already people like Berengo is the oldest one in the collection. He's, uh, he was born in uh, 1928, uh, and the youngest is Mariva, Marina Caneve, that you cannot see now, but uh, in another venue. Um, and <laughs> Yes, mid 80s, yes, sorry. Um, so, I mean, uh, all uh, are, uh, during their career, from the older to the youngest, are particularly focused on investigating landscape and architecture. That was the main tool. Finding different, um, appro in different approach, giving us different lecture. But the main focus that we were interested in was the researches they developed over the year on landscape and architecture. This is the Phil Rouge. And all of them very different, very, very different for age, approaches, style, but they all intend photography as a tool for a research. Uh, and so that is the main interesting thing. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all. I think we have time for some questions from the audience. Excellent idea. Excellent idea. <laughs> I, mean, I can't see the before. audience. <laughs> we have a question. Another one. Quick, yeah, quick question. Are, does the ICCD make available online yes. any of the photographers' works that, like some of the works we'll be seeing tonight? If you can see online, yes. Yes, of course. I will give you later the, the website. We have two websites. I will explain later. Yes, I will tell you. <laughs> okay, yeah. go ahead. So we, we have um, a, an institutional uh, website that's more about what's happening. And then we, we have a new website devoted, completely devoted to photography collection mm. that we didn't launch or, uh, still but we want to in a sh maybe yeah october and um, i will give you the address is uh, on the platform of the ministry of culture because each is an institute an independent institute within the ministry of culture obviously and so is a platform on which all the institute of the ministry will put their database mm -hmm. and so but we are the first well, <laughs> that populated completely. And of six million of items, of course, we don't have digitalized everything, but you can search by photographer, by found or collection, by place, by date, by techniques, because we have from daguerreotypes to uh, digital files. We have a huge collection of aerial photography and, and so on. So yeah, the story is long. So, yeah. but I don't want to it's annoy really people is here to see the exhibition. <laughs> but the story is long and very interesting. But uh, so uh, we are very connected with cultural heritage and photography. And so this exhibition is uh, our pen quotidien. <laughs> I hope Anything I answer else? it. To, to yes. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Any other question? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you need a photo? Oh. I don't have a question, a question but a, a, a personal consideration. Am I allowed? To? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's about um, um, photography or history of photography and cultural heritage. And I'm... I'm and... Uh, in, in, in both countries, uh, US and Italy, photography at the beginning had a, a pivotal role in, uh, in the knowledge and preservation of, a, of a heritage. Uh, uh, as you know, in, uh, uh, in the US, uh, uh, the, the first 
uh, real national monument to be protected was the Yosemite Valley and Mariposa Grove. And both this side uh, came to a, 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 a protection through the work of a photographer. Eh? His name was Watkins. I, I can't remember uh, the, the name. Yeah. The family name was Watkins. And uh, a, a young guy coming from uh, New York uh, who arrived in the 40s, 1840s in California uh, along the Golden Rush, uh, working in mines, uh, and uh, in the 50s uh, he was taught uh, to photography by a local photographer in San Francisco and was the first that visiting, uh, discovering the Yosemite Valley, took photographs. Uh, wonderful photographs, wonderful pictures, and it was through the work of his photographer that a few uh, years later, Abraham Lincoln, the president, uh, in the middle of a civil war, granted uh, the area, was convinced that the area had to be protected and granted the area to the state of California to be, to be preserved and became later the National Park. And it was a photographer, it was a photography, there was a photography to, 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 to uh, the first act of, uh, of the great history of the National Parks in the uh, United States. And exactly, it's, it's, uh, it's curious, but exactly at the same time, it was the beginning of uh, photo photography everywhere, in the 1850s, uh, the Alinari opened in, uh, in Florence uh, their office, the laboratory, and uh, in eight, it, it was 1863, uh, one year before that, uh, uh, the, 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 the grant of uh, Yosemite Valley to California. In 1863, they, they opened their, in, in, a, in, a, in the center of uh, Florence, uh, in, in a palace, uh, the, 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 the office of the firm, the firm. And, uh, and, and Alinari played a role. It's true that Italy was, was, was famous through the Grand Tour, the paintings, but Alinari added something more because they, before existing a catalog, they, they began to catalog not only the uh, historical cities and monuments, but the, um, all the works in the local museums, mm -hmm. uh, uh, paintings, uh, sculptures, uh, uh, having a, a great role in, uh, in, uh, in establishing uh, the myth of Italy as cradle of arts uh, for, for everybody. So uh, the artistic uh, uh, heritage for Italy and natural heritage for the state were both uh, uh, promoted by photography at the beginning of history. Emily, you that's have all. a role <laughs> to <laughs> yeah, That's what I was doing this summer in Italy. It was uh, leading a course on the history of photography and art history. And I will say, um, just to wrap this up, that um, Honestly, without photography, we certainly wouldn't have art history as a discipline the way we have it today, because if you can't show slides of art, and if you can't print art in books with your arguments, then um, art history would still be just you know individual people with collections at salons and not, not what it is today. And certainly, we wouldn't have this <laughs> exhibition without photography. So uh, thank you all for uh, your presentations and for um, providing us with so much to think about as we walk into the exhibition. And thank you again uh, for having us here. Thank you. Thank you to Annie. Thank, thank you for coordinating. I don't think we have an official role. We need to, We're going to. to go and open. So let's do that. <laughs>